this. I'm not going to lie. What do you want me to do? You, do you want me to just say, oh, this doesn't mean anything? Because I just say the same thing if they lost or if they won. It's one out of 162. Yeah, it's one out of 162. But it was a pretty nice one out of 162. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. From Cincinnati, I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. Pirates 5, Reds 4. It was thorough from the fundamental standpoint. There's nothing that the Pirates didn't do right when they had an option to do something wrong. And I'll tell you what, that is a brand of baseball that I can get behind. I can get behind O'Neill Cruz both slugging a 101 mile an hour, 100 green fastball into the seats the same way that I can the sack fly that he engineered in the eighth inning. And I do mean engineered because he went and turned the other way, stuff that you never see from him, and gave like this little one-handed, using his right hand, push to get the ball out to the track in left field. I'll take Austin Hedges' throw to prevent a steal attempt in the Cincinnati eighth, and I'll take Cruz's tag that he slapped down on that dude to make sure that he was out. And look, I know they reviewed it and everything else. I don't care if he was really out or really safe. They called him out. He's out, okay? He, you know, the inning was over. Strike him out, throw him out. It was really, really nice baseball. I'll take Jihuan Bay going two for three with a couple walks, couple steals, couple runs. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You guys have to acknowledge here in some form or other that I'd been picking this kid to be my breakout guy going back to the middle of February. And even when everyone was saying this was in Bradenton, and I heard it myself when I was down there, he's not going to make the team, he's not going to make the team, second base belongs to Rodolfo Castro, maybe he's going to have to make it as an outfielder, no, he's not going to make it as an outfielder, so he's definitely not making the team. And he makes the team, and he does all this, and he makes it look kind of easy, you know? With that speed, that aggressiveness, everything else that he's got. When Green was coasting early, it was Bay that put down the the bunt single to just get him a little bit off of his game, to make him a little bit uncomfortable. Man, does this team need somebody like that. You know, give it up here a little bit because I did call that. All right, one out of 162. Not taking that one too far either. This is the kind of thing upon which a team can build. Listen to how... Derek Shelton answered my question whenever I asked, uh, to what degree a manager can see this as a real delight, you know, this kind of game, especially since he had some issues with the team's fundamentals early in spring training. You stressed the fundamentals and everything and, and the rough start that you had in the spring. How satisfying is a day like this when you, your team basically does everything right? Yeah, we. I mean, we played really well. And, yeah. and I think we talked at the end of the spring and even yesterday that we did not play well fundamentally. But today we did. You know, we threw the ball to the right bases. We made the right reads. I mean, even the, yeah. the little one there in the end on the ball that India hits, you know, Brian knows, OK, I may have a chance that, to hit instead of throwing the ball to third base. The little things like that. So overall, like really really pleased because there was a lot of team stuff that happened today. It wasn't one guy that, that did it. We kind of did it up and down and, and, uh, and with our pitching too. He's a pretty happy guy in almost any circumstance. He was really happy after this. That had to feel good. Uh, for anyone who can't comprehend the amount of work, the long hours, the long days that go into all the preparation and execution of spring drills, spring exhibitions, and everything. And for that manager, that coaching staff, and yeah, of course, those players, to be rewarded with the very first game being something that looked like it was out of a Tommy Mansky drill video, that's that's got to feel pretty nice, you know? But it also might mean more than that. Uh, after the clubhouse was pretty much empty, I sat and waited out Austin Hedges. I was really impressed with his game uh, behind the plate. I'm not going to lie. I 
known very little about Hedges' career before he got to Pittsburgh. Uh, I know that his hitting prowess isn't exactly off the charts, but I know that he is seen around the game as one of the best, maybe the best defensive catcher anywhere. And when you see a game like this and the little, little, little things that kept adding up, you can appreciate how much he can mean. I I wanted to hear from him about this overall performance. And here's some of what he had to say. I have to ask you how much it means to you as somebody who's been known for being such a fundamentally sound player to have a fundamentally sound victory like this team wide. That's what Shelty called a team victory. Yeah, it's, all over uh, the field, man. It's it's winning baseball. Yeah, and it's 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 why I play the game. I love winning baseball, winning fundamental baseball, doing the little things, the sack flies, the moving the guys over, pitching, double plays, just all the things, walking. Like it was such a team. It was a full Pittsburgh Pirate team win, and to do that on game one. I mean, that's, I think it's going to set us up for the rest of the year because it's like now we have a blueprint. Look at that there works. There that is. works. Let's do that. That's really cool. That that's that that's all I've got. I'm not taking this too far. Uh, and no, I'm not avoiding the Brian Reynolds thing. I'm going to bring it up in the next segment. I just want it to be known that if this team is going to have that big successful step forward or even a stride forward this summer. It's going to look like this. It's going to look a lot like this. When we come back, J1Q, and it will be on Reynolds. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q, as promised, comes from Rico, who says... Lord, a conceptual issue? That sounds like something out of an existential novel. For pity's sake, just give the man what he wants and stop acting like typical pirate's management. Rico is, of course, referring to the subject I promised I would get to, that being Brian Reynolds and the team having achieved an agreement on the total number of dollars in his contract, in his extension that everybody's been waiting on and that CAA, his representation, had made clear to Ben Charrington and the Pirates that they wanted to have that done by the first pitch of opening day. Well, 4.10 p.m. came and went here in Cincinnati, and there was nothing of the kind. In fact, there is no deal as a source told our Alex Stone for TK Pittsburgh Sports. So what's left here? Well, what's left is a whole lot of supposition and speculation as to what's meant by something that isn't money has gotten in the way of completing this pact. I can tell you that in a lifetime, not just of covering sports, but in following sports, I have never once heard of an agreement that fell apart after the money was in place. They always, always, always find a way to bridge out the rest. And I believe that'll be the case here. So I don't care if it's a no trade clause that's in question, if it's an opt out that's become kind of a cool thing around Major League Baseball where uh, you can put into your contract that after, let's say, year four or year five, the player can just declare himself a free agent and go wherever it is that he pleases. It could be a matter of club options. It could be really any number of things. But the money is done. And I'm going to tell you something else. When this game was over, 
here yesterday, and most of the interviews had been done. Uh, the pack of reporters from Pittsburgh naturally were going to wait around until Reynolds showed just to see if he'd have anything at all to say. Uh, he didn't. He gave a very clear, polite, no comment. He was not going to talk about the contract. He'd talk about the game. He'd talk about whatever else. He wasn't going to talk about the contract. The agency didn't publicly comment either. Now, if you've been following this saga as closely as I'd imagine you have, you'll know that neither Reynolds nor his agency, nor for that matter, anyone really associated with the Pirates, has been mum about this at any stage. Charrington's talked about it. Bob Nutting's talked about it at length. You've heard from Reynolds pretty much every other day. And all of a sudden, after the deadline passes, well after 4.10 p.m., everyone was still staying quiet. I am going to go out on a really, really thin branch here and share with you my theory that they're not done. Just on that obvious front alone. Once more, but with gusto, no one, no one, no one gets to the point where they agree on the money and can't get it done. It'll get done. Today's an off day here in Cincinnati. The team will be back in action tomorrow and then Sunday. There is a chance, a nice, easy chance for everybody to chill a little bit and get it done today. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one of these on Monday. 